All right, class, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I just want to quickly go through chapter seven. Um, concepts you really should have mastered is density, right? Density is mass over volume. Mass is basically the weight, uh, is, is related to the weight, or um, it is about the amount of substance, okay? So uh, if I weigh 100, if I'm 100 kilograms, right, that is my mass. I weigh, you know, 200 pounds. Um, somebody else, is 50 kilograms, they weigh 100 pounds. So our weight is related to our mass, okay? Um, so at sea level, uh, mass and weight would be directly proportionate to each other, okay? Um, but I want you guys to really master this idea that if the volume, that is the space that it, I take up, right? So if we're talking about my Mr. Scribner, my volume is the amount of space I take up. So it'd be very difficult for me to calculate my volume, all right? Um, but if we use a block or a, you know, like a two liter bottle of Coke, right? The volume of that two liter bottle is two liters. Liters is a measure of volume, okay? And usually in science, we use liters as our measurement for volume. In mass, we use grams or kilograms. So density is either going to be grams over liters or kilograms over liters. Sometimes for liters, we use uh, centimeters cubed, Okay, um, and if I were to draw a picture of a ice cube, you would see that that has three sides, right? Three dimensions, length, width, and height. And if each of those was 10 uh, centimeters, right? Then you'd have 10 times 10 times 10 would be 1,000. So one cube that is uh, 10 centimeters long, right, is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed, which is equal to one liter of water. And so we say in one liter of water, water weighs, uh, you know, 10 newtons or one kilogram of mass. So one kilogram of mass divided by one liter, one over one is one. So the density of water is one. Everything is related to that. So if you move to page 134, you can see grams per cubic centimeter, okay? And you can also see kilograms per cubic meter, all right? And I want you guys to just note, if you look at water, you have at four degrees Celsius, water is one gram per centimeter cubed, right? So a thousand grams, one kilogram, and a thousand centimeters cubed would be one liter. So one kilogram over one liter is also the same measurement, okay? Um, and... You know, so I want you guys to just take a note and look at those densities. Uh, so anything that is greater than one. So if you look at seawater, seawater would sink in regular water, right? Mercury would sink. Alcohol would float, right? So if you think about like oil, oil of course floats. Now look at the bottom at ice, 0.92, right? Grams per centimeter cubed. So ice does float, okay? Um, very important to understand these. Uh, and then you have different gases, right? The densities of gases. Of course, densities of gases are going to be much smaller. Why? Because gases are very, very light, all right? Or they take up a very large amount of space for the amount of mass that they obtain, okay? So weight density is simply just the weight of something by the volume, all right? Moving on to pressure. Pressure is going to be the force over the area, all right, so the amount of force that something applies over the amount of space that it is applied to. So, for example, if you were to step on a nail, right, it would pierce your skin. Why? Because you have a large weight, all right, or a large force on a small area, area, and therefore it pierces your skin. But if the nail was really, really, uh, if you had, like, let's say, 20 nails, right, and you stepped on those 20 nails, because that same force is now applied over a larger area of your entire foot, then the nails don't cut you. And you can see the picture of the guy stepping on uh, with a cinder block, right? And he's got nails on his stomach and on his back, and the guy is standing, on, standing next to it, and he's breaking the cinder block on the guy's stomach. And as you see, uh, it doesn't harm him. The nails do not pierce his skin because it is a large area, okay? Pressures in a liquid, right? The way that, the, the best way to look at this is on page 136, you see the two lakes. 
Pressure in a liquid is directly dependent upon the depth, right? So if you have a shallow lake, the amount of water that is above the bottom of the lake, there is not very much, uh, is less water, so it's less weight on top of you, meaning less pressure. But if you're deep, there's a lot of water above you, right? So if you look at the large but shallow lake, it's only three meters deep, that's, that's about nine feet deep. It is not very much pressure on the dam. But six meters deep, double, the small pond, it is double the depth, so it has double the pressure. And you can also see a great picture of this on the next page when you look at the glass, right? You see the three different streams of water that have been poked out from the glass. This is a great thing you can try at home if you have a styrofoam or paper cup. You can drill three holes in it and, um, well, first, you know, you can tape or close uh, two of the holes and see how the water flows out, okay? And you'll see at the bottom, the bottom hole, will produce the most pressure or it'll shoot out the farthest because it has the most pressure there. All right, um, I already went through buoyancy in the worksheet, so you should go and look at those, but e essentially buoyancy is just equal to the amount of volume of water that is displaced. That is the buoyant force. All right, we call this Archimedes principle. Okay, so the, the buoyant force is equal to the volume of the water or the, vo the weight of the water that has been displaced. When I mean displaced, I mean the water that has moved. So for example, if you take a glass of water and uh, if you had a, um, a graduated cylinder, which is what we have in our classroom, the little glass tubes with the lines on the side so you can see volume, you could even do it with like a, measure a glass measuring cup that you might have at home. But if you put water in there and then you drop a rock in, the amount of water that raises when the rock goes in, that is the volume, right? That change of, of that raise of the water, that is the volume that the rock takes, uh, takes up. So you could take that water, that difference of water, and you could weigh that water and you could find out the buoyant force of that rock, right? When the rock is in the water, the buoyant force of the water, okay? And if the buoyant force is greater than the mass of the um, object or the weight of the object, then the object will float. For example, wood, the density is less than, okay, specifically because the buoyant, uh, sorry, wood floats specifically because the amount of water that is displaced or moved when the, when the wood sits in the water, that space is therefore a greater weight, that water is a greater weight than the wood itself. So therefore, if the water is heavier than the wood, the wood will float. But if the rock or something else is heavier than the water, then it sinks. Okay, and so that's Archimedes' principle. You can see that in 7.4, 7.5. Okay, and um, as you look at uh, like why a boat can float, if you look on page 140, you can see the big wide piece of iron. If you have the same amount of iron in a block, the iron sinks, right? Because it takes up only a small amount of water. But if you make a U shape out of it, like a boat, now it's displacing a ton of water, and so the ship will float, right? And that's how we have boats and ships, okay? Um, very important to understand that Archimedes principle. And the worksheets all will help to develop your understanding of that. All right, pressure in a gas, right? As you decrease the volume of a gas, as you can see in 7.6, 141, as the little lever pushes down on the gas, you can see that the volume is decreasing, so the pressure will be increasing. This is known as Boyle's Law. Pressure times volume equals pressure times volume, and you can see it on page 142, P1V1 equals P2V2. This is the exact same, this is the, the law that demonstrates when you put your thumb over the hose, the, the pressure increases. Why? Because you are decreasing the amount of volume or the space that the water can come out. So therefore the pressure increases and the water shoots out a farther distance. Okay? Um, you know, same thing for your shower. When the water is passing through the, uh, the pipes in your house, the pressure isn't too great, otherwise it would break the pipes. And then you get up to the shower head and then it turns into tiny little holes and that's why the water can shoot out a far distance uh, from the shower head, okay? Uh, moving forward into uh, um, other parts of uh, 
gas pressure, right? Barometers, right? They are measuring the pressure, okay? And the higher you go in the atmosphere, the less pressure there is, okay? So down at sea level, you have a high pressure. There's 14.7 pounds for every square inch of your body on your skin at sea level, okay? What does that mean? That means that if you had less pressure, right? If you went to outer space where there was almost no pressure, the gas in your body would start to push out against your skin because you wouldn't have the pressure against your skin. You would inflate and eventually you would pop like a balloon, okay? So it is amazing how here in, you know, at Earth, at sea level, there's 14 pounds for every square inch on your body pushing against you, keeping your body together. If you go too high in the atmosphere, you will, that pressure will be less and you'll begin to expand and your organs will pop and you'll die, okay? So we live in a, an actual very perfect environment, very stable. If that were to change a few pounds per square inch, we would die uh, here on earth. Um, don't be scared because God made it this way and he's in control. We don't have to worry about the pressure changing. It hasn't changed in 6,000 years and uh, I don't think it will change anytime soon, okay? But it's very important to understand that as you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. If you increase the volume, you decrease the pressure. It's just like in a, uh, uh, a balloon, if you were to uh, keep blowing up a balloon, eventually the pressure would become too great and it would pop, okay? Um, very cool science that we learned, uh, Pascal's principle is, um, if you can look on page 146, you can have a very small area, right? A 10 kilogram weight pushing on that small area and it can push a very large weight. This is how, ele this is one of the ways elevators work. It's a hydraulic uh, lift, right? They just change the pressure of the, the, the liquid or the hydraulic fluid and that liquid, because liquid cannot be um, uh, compressed, it can lift an elevator of thousands and thousands of pounds, okay? And so it's very cool how using Pascal's principle, important to understand that. And lastly, buoyancy of a gas, all right? As we can, we, we um, the buoyancy of a gas is an object surrounded by air is buoyed up or buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the air displaced. So this is the same concept as Bernoulli's principle, uh, sorry, Archimedes principle, Bernoulli's principle is next, is that the amount of space that it takes up in the atmosphere, that air, that the weight of that air is the amount uh, that it is the, the buoyant force in the atmosphere, okay? So what, what you need is, you would need, in order for something to float like a balloon, you would need, um, like you take the helium and you put the helium in the balloon, you can see that that space that that balloon takes up is greater, right? With the amount of helium in it, right? The volume is greater than, the weight of that balloon is greater than the weight of the air that that volume takes up. And so therefore that balloon will go up or it will rise, okay? If the density is greater, then it will fall to the ground. So everything like uh, rocks, right? You drop a rock, it falls to the ground, okay? If you tie the rock to the end of a balloon that's full of helium, if the weight, right? If the volume of that balloon is greater, right? Um, then the weight of the entire contraption connected to the rock, then even then the rock will go up. And so you have these things, they're called weather balloons, where people have attached them to, uh, you know, one guy attached it to a chair with like a parachute and he went way up into the atmosphere um, because he was, he had these weather balloons. So therefore his weight plus the weight of the balloon, all of that, the weight was less than the force pushing upward. And so it took him up and he had like a gun or something to shoot the balloons to bring himself back down. So that is the buoyant force in uh, a gap. All right, lastly, Bernoulli's principle. We're gonna, uh, this one is quick, but basically Bernoulli's principle um, is that the speed of a fluid increases, the internal pressure of the fluid increases, okay? Um, but I want you to also think about how this works. If there's a strong wind, like on the roof in page 150, right? Because the wind 
is moving fast above the roof, it creates less pressure above the roof, right? And the pressure from below the roof is greater, and so the roof can rip off. This is how an airplane works. As the plane moves faster, the wind on top of the wing moves faster than the, wing, the wind below the wing, and therefore, there's what we call lift, and so the wing pulls up. And if that lift is greater than the weight of the plane, the plane will lift off the ground, okay? And you can see the picture of the roof, and you can see the picture of the wing on page 150, right? These are applications of Bernoulli's principle, okay? You can see how you can see it when in, on page uh, 150 down at the bottom, figure 7.39. If you blow on the top of a paper, the paper will rise because you are uh, exhibiting um, Bernoulli's principle. You also see the baseball, uh, as the baseball moves, and it, you know, if it's spinning to the left, right, you're creating, if you will, top spin. So now the pressure on the bottom moving faster, so the ball will drop. And that's how you create a, uh, you know, like a sinker as a, if you're a pitcher, okay? Um, as you look uh, at the bottom of page 151, yeah, bottom of page 151, um, says, why can't you blow the uh, bent a uh, filing card off the table when you blow through the arc. Um, and the reason why is because the, the pressure is underneath the filing card, so it's pulling it down towards the table. If you blow on top of the card, then it will lift it off the table and it will slide, okay? Um, the same reason why in a strong wind, if, you're, if you have an umbrella, like on page 152, if you uh, hold the umbrella, the wind hitting the top of the umbrella creates less pressure on top and more pressure below and so therefore the umbrella will rip and invert as the lady and she's saying rats to you daniel bernoulli she's referencing bernoulli's principle all right so i hope this helped you to understand it um, if you have any questions please just uh email me contact me you can see the summary of the terms those are all very important for you guys to understand um, and again if you have any questions let me know uh, and i hope you guys are all doing well again all right bye